phones are, or smartphones are an example of both planned obsolescence and perceived obsolescence. Planned obsolescence is something that's designed for the dump. It is made to be used and not used for long. Perceived obsolescence, perceived, or they just make you think you need something new. And the question is, do you really need a new phone every two years? Well, part of this uh, goes into the life cycle of that phone when you're thinking about this. So what is the phone made of? Where does it go? And what happens during the lifespan of its use? So this cycle, this circle represents the life cycle. So starting at the top, the birth of this, the life of this phone. The fabrication uses natural resources, raw materials. It, it requires energy and electricity to put all that together. And once that phone is created, then it is shipped out and take it on stores purchased by consumers. The process requires energy to make and the process requires energy to ship. So consumers buy a phone. And uh, when consumers use this, they use energy and electricity, not only for the charging, but also for routers and for websites. This requires, uh, this uses energy and we'll be learning that energy uh, generation of energy or electricity for the grid uh, leads to air pollution. And so this is air pollution, not just from the transportation, but also from electricity. So uh, then what happens when you are done using that? Do you um, take it to recycling, uh, which is specific e-waste? We'll talk about that. And the recycling process is great because although this requires um, shipping the phone to a plant that can extract those different materials and process and turn those materials back into raw materials that can be made into a new phone. So this would be a cradle to cradle example where the end of the life cycle of your phone is going to be the beginning of the life cycle of another new phone from all those raw materials when they've been extracted and processed. That would be if the phone ends up in recycling. But how many of you have phones or drawer full of phones at home and have not taken to e-waste or recycling. Well, that's an example of cradle to grave. No energy is used for this extraction and processing, but this is a waste of those natural resources. So this is something we will talk about, uh, the taking a phone to e-waste. So human activities require consumption of natural resources, whether we like it or not, whether it's a green activity or a non-green activity, and they result in creation of waste. And so one thing to think about is the stuff you have. Where does it come from and where does it go? In the U.S., we are in a materials economy that is consumer driven. We're told, we're marketed to, we're asked to buy stuff and we consume that stuff. And that stuff we consume consumes natural resources. It takes natural resources to make all that stuff and it also creates waste. Now, most of this stuff we don't need or want, but we fall prey to planned obsolescence. This is designed for the dump. These are throwaway items like disposable plastics, or single use plastics, or even these phones. This is an example of planned obsolescence by the phone companies where they change the charging ports and then suddenly you need to buy a new charger. So not only do you have a, a drawer full of old phones, you also have a drawer full of old chargers. Also, we fall prey to perceived obsolescence, things that are no longer fashionable, but they could still work. So this is the um, evolution of cell phones here from 2007 up to 2017. Uh, did there need to be a new cell phone rolled out every single year? Would a phone work if it was three years old or five years old or even 10 years old? Um, that is something that is simply marketing. So what happens at the end of a product or an item's life? Is it recycled? And which would be a cradle to cradle, a closed loop where all those natural resources could be repurposed or reused and remade into a new product could be the exact same product like a cell phone or some of the materials could turn into a new product with a new life like a t-shirt um, or is it in the trash which would be cradle to grave not a closed loop so the cradle to cradle is it is a better approach all of these all of this is an energy intensive process whether it's recycled or not so we will talk about recycling in a future chapter and um, we'll also be talking about plastics, which uh, plastics are the main recycling um, it, it, when you're thinking about recycling. But 
Unfortunately, single-use plastics, these are an example, single-use plastics of planned obsolescence. These are designed for people to use and then throw away. And single-use plastics, unfortunately, end up in the oceans, well, not because people are throwing them in the oceans, but that's just the way plastics work. And so, ideally, um, things get recycled. We can't always guarantee that, but some things end up just being disposed, end up in landfill, or worse yet, in our oceans.